What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, I'm gonna share 10 of the biggest tips I have from all of my courses. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So uh, thing one is just your model organization in general. And so in general, what you need to be doing when you're creating models like this is you need to be able, you need to be setting them up where different kinds of geometry are grouped separately. So for example, and we'll talk a little bit more about this later, but my interior walls are all in a group. And then all of my cabinets are in a group. Um, all of my windows are in a group. What that does is it gives me the ability to isolate anything and everything that I want. So if we go through, you can see how I have everything tagged so that I can toggle these things on and off at any given time. That gives me the ability to do two things. The first is just to access different things in the model. And we'll talk about another way to make this easier as well. But say that I did need to get in and just look at these interior walls, or maybe I needed to get to this exterior wall. Um, what I could do is I can just toggle my interior walls off. But you can see how everything inside of this model is nicely grouped. So I don't have any geometry merging on top of any other geometry. Like if I was to go through and toggle all of my tags off, you can see how every single piece of geometry that I have inside of my model is both tagged and in a group that keeps any of your geometry from merging together so that means if i need to do something like change uh, where the opening of this door is i can actually set this up or i can just jump in here we're going to go inside of the wall right here but say i needed to move the door i have the geometry set up where i can just pick that geometry up and move it really quickly and then i can just move this door group um, into the opening right here. And so what this does is it makes changes really easy because you don't have a whole bunch of geometry merging together, which is like the absolute worst thing that can happen um, is having all your geometry merged together. But it also gives you the ability to isolate different parts and pieces and just work on those, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a second. Okay. So next up is if you're modeling a multiple floor model, you need to group your floors separately. So you can see how right here, for example, I have a model that I've been working on that has a second level and a first level. Well, the thing is you need to be able to isolate those different model or those different sections so that you can get in here and work on your first floor because otherwise you've got this kind of like working view that you have to come in here and kind of like move around in order to try to get in here and make any changes that you have. Well, if you set your model up and I can kind of show you in my outliner where you've got a level one and a level two, and then you put those levels on different tags, what that does is it gives you the ability to be able to isolate um, the different levels. So for example, if I was to, first off, I'm going to toggle off this line work because I don't really need it, but I could toggle off level two. Whoops. So I could toggle off level two and it just gives me access to level one so I can get in there and work. So if you're ever creating a multiple story building, you need to model the different levels differently and then tag them so that you can toggle them on and off. And so another thing you need to do is you need to create libraries that you can access for later. And this is a little bit of overkill because I'm just kind of like visually showing what's possible here. But each one of these is a dynamic component that can actually be resized. We'll talk about that in a minute. But right now what I have is I have my cabinet library in here where I can just pick different cabinets and then just drop them in. So instead of me having to go through and manually model out cabinets, like let's say, for example, in this model, I wanted to add some cabinets under this shelf right here. Instead of me having to go through and like start from scratch and you know model this up and model the different parts and pieces and make it into a whole thing what i can do instead is i can just go pull from a library of objects that i've already created and bring them in you should always be kind of creating your own libraries of different models of things that you reuse over and over again that way you can just bring them in from that model instead of you actually having to um, remodel them over and over again. And while we're talking about this, if you can use dynamic components, you should. Like this is one of the most valuable things that I've learned from everything that I've done with things like kitchen cabinets and everything like that is the more you can make dynamic, the better, right? And remember, dynamic components are components that you can scale and resize, and they're gonna automatically resize for you. So these cabinets are actually part of a library that I make available inside of the course, um, but you could create your own, or there's some in the 3D warehouse as well, but they save me so much time because what I can do is I can just figure out, I can just divide this into three edges right here, but then I can take this whole thing, I can align it with a corner right here, so we wanna align it with the inside, but then I can just rescale this so that there it is. 
I can just rescale this so that it fits in the opening. And then it's just a question of me just making copies. Right here. And I've got those cabinets that are good to go. So instead of me having to remodel these, I just use dynamic components and it saves so much time. If you are looking for a library of those, you can get those as a part of the, as a part of the lifetime access deal. Um, these are my cabinet library and my window library and my door library are available for students inside of the course, but you can make your own as well. And so another thing that I find valuable is we just talked about how you have to group things, right? So I have all my different cabinets grouped, but sometimes you bring things into your model and they're not a part of that group. Group. And so one of the tools that SketchUp has, which is really valuable, is the paste in place function. So like, for example, I want to take these three cabinets and I want to put them inside of my cabinets group. So part of the reason for that is because I've applied this wood material to the outside of that group so I can quickly change the material of all my cabinets. Well, notice how that material isn't applied to these because they're not in the group. Well, if I take these objects and I cut them, so you can either do an edit cut or you can, you can do a control X. So if you do a control X and then you double click into this group, there's this handy little function called paste in place. And so what paste in place does is it pastes the objects that you had cut, but it keeps their location the same. So if I do an edit paste in place, notice how now these cabinets are inside of this cabinet group right here. So what you can do is you can cut objects, then enter a group and do a paste in place. And you can basically place objects inside of groups without you actually having to move them around in the outline or anything like that. I use paste in place constantly to move things around inside of groups, outside of groups, things like that. Okay, and so another thing that you might have noticed when I was working with these cabinets is when I first placed them, it was a little bit tricky for me to see where the grips are in here, right? And so being able to see where the grips are is really important because I wanna be able to move this. And it's also important sometimes to be able to see a point like on the back side of an object, even though you can't see it in here. So say instead of using this corner point, for example, I wanted to use this back point right here. I, I know there's a little bit of a inference point that shows up if you mouse over this, but one of the things that I find extremely helpful is I have mapped the ability to toggle X-ray mode on. Remember that's inside of your styles toolbar right here but I have mapped that to the X key on my keyboard. So what that does is that gives me the ability to see through objects in here. Well, that's really valuable if I need to go in and find like an inference point on this object, you know? So like, for example, if I need to find a point on the back side of this, and again, this corner is a little bit of a bad example, but we're going to use it anyway. If you toggle X-ray mode on, I can actually see on the back side of this object, but I can also see the corner over here that I'm trying to inference to. So I am constantly, when I'm moving things around in my model, I just tap the X key in order to toggle X-ray mode on and off. It saves me so much time from the standpoint of placing objects in difficult points. So um, that's something that I use a lot. And again, the other thing it does is notice how when you toggle X-ray mode on, you can actually see where those scaling grips are on the back side. So say that I did have this in the corner over here. We'll align this and say that I wanted to see that scaling grip. I could just tap the X key in order to see it. And then I could rescale this and I could toggle it back off using the X key on my keyboard. And so the other keyboard shortcut that I have that I find really helpful um, is there's an option inside of your model information. So if you go to window, I think it's model info. It might be preferences. Let's see. Nope, it's model info. So if you go to window model info, right here, there's an option, and you might have seen this, you might have even wondered where your model's gone, um, but there's an option over here under fade rest of model um, for whenever you double click into a group, it, it can fade everything else that's in the model, right? And this slider right here gives you the ability to set the strength of the fade. Well, there's also an option in here for hide rest of model. And so what hide rest of model does is it's actually going to hide everything outside of the group that you're editing. This is massively helpful for me because it allows me to isolate different parts and pieces of my model really quickly. So if I need to get in here and mess with my cabinets, for example, I can toggle that hide rest of model on inside of my model info. Now, the other thing about this though, is you can map fade rest of model or the hide rest of model to a keyboard shortcut. So if you go to window preferences and you go to your shortcuts and you look for hide rest of model, 
right here, you can add a shortcut. So for me, it's shift H to toggle that on and off. So remember how we were talking about how I can toggle x-ray mode on and off with the X key? Well, I can also toggle on hide rest of model with a shift H on my keyboard. So what that does is that gives me the ability. Um, sometimes I need to get in here and edit something, but then in the middle of the edit, I need to be able to quickly toggle this back on to see where something is in the rest of my model. Well, I just do a shift H and I'm able to do that. So um, having that shift H on is massively helpful for letting you isolate different parts and pieces of your model really quickly. And so another thing that I find valuable is sometimes I'm trying to set up views inside of my model like this. And you can navigate in and you can set up the view um, using the first or using their orbit tool and everything else. But inside of tight spaces, that can get really tricky. Um, so what I like to do instead is I like to use this function right here, which is position camera. You can find it in your large tool set. So if you right click and turn on large tool set, it's right here. But what position camera does is it allows you to position your view. However, a lot of people don't know the right way to use this. So what they'll do is they'll click in here and then they'll single click and that's fine. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't give you the ability to set where your camera is looking. Now it does kind of toggle to this eyeball view right here. And so that can be helpful. But for me, what I find more helpful is if you toggle this tool on, so if you click in here and then you set a point, so say I wanted to set a point right here and you want to look inside of the kitchen, you can actually click and drag and it's going to set your camera right here and it's going to set the direction of your camera based on where you drag. Well, then the other thing about this is notice how it drops you into the, the first person look around mode. Well, if you type in a height like six feet and hit the enter key, that's going to set your camera to six feet inside of this space. So I can use this to set up camera views really quickly looking wherever I want. So say I wanted to set up a view where I'm standing on the second level loft looking out, well, I can just click and drag in order to do that. And then in this case, what I would probably do is toggle my or move my camera view up a little bit like this. Now, the other thing is remember that you can also go into your zoom tool. So you can click on zoom and you can type in a new field of view. So in this case, I might type in a field of view of 55 or 45, depending on what I want. But notice how I can use this in order to quickly set up a view that has a wider field of view. So you can actually see what the view would look like looking down into the living room of the space or something like that. So the field of view is very valuable. Okay, so finally, this is a tip for helping you set the way that things look so that they can look a lot less flat in your views. So for example, I have an elevation view of the interior of my bathroom model in here, and it's fine, but it just looks really flat, right? There's no visual indicators of what's going on. Um, so some of the profiles aren't really showing up in here. I could probably toggle my profiles on in order to get them to show up, but it just looks very flat. Well, one really easy thing you can do to add depth to things like your elevations or your plan views is you can go into your styles under your face settings right here, and you can check the box for ambient occlusion. So what ambient occlusion does is it basically adds highlights to crevices in your model, right? So like, for example, you're starting to see it in the corners right here of this model, but you're also seeing it over here. Well, what adding ambient occlusion does is it adds depth to your image without you having to change or adjust anything else. So you can kind of see like, okay, these lights are off the wall a little bit. These objects are off the wall. So just by toggling a little bit of ambient occlusion on, you can add a whole bunch of depth to your scene without having to do a whole bunch of additional work. And this is something that I find especially helpful for things like plan views. And so if I go into this plan view right here, notice how this looks very flat. Well, if I add um, ambient occlusion to this, look at the tub, for example. If I just add a little bit of ambient occlusion right here, you suddenly get the depth of the tub in there without having to show a whole bunch of additional geometry or anything like that. And you don't have to do a lot. You can just do a little, but it just makes a massive difference in the way that this plan looks just by adding just a little bit of additional depth. So if you check that ambient occlusion, your plan views and your elevation views can look a lot better inside of layout.
All right, so those are just a few of the things that I teach you inside of the SketchUp Essentials course. If you are interested in getting lifetime access to that course, that's something that closes at the end of the day today. So you can check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. But leave a comment below. Let me know if you knew about these tips, if you use any of them. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.